Welcome back to Foulmouth Fishing. Um, this is part two of uh, the what's in my bag. So last time I showed you my uh, my one flambo with uh, my soft plastic creature baits and things like this. Uh, this one is going to be really quick of more of my hard baits. Um, <clears throat> more of my top water stuff but not all of it. But uh, I thought I'd break this up because if I just went and did one video of all my tackle it would take hours and that's not really Nobody wants to watch that. <laughs> so I broke these up in little things. But uh, this is a different bag altogether, but you'll be able to see what's inside this one. This one I tend to carry on my shoulder because it's a fair bit heavier than the other one from the last episode. That's light enough. I can just grab it by the hand straps. This one I throw over my shoulder just for the extra leverage. So, again, these old Gander Mountain Flambeau bags, um, they have a couple of pockets. I like this front one because this front one adds the benefit of being able to zip down and make a platform. Um, in this one, I keep uh, a handful of those Japanese um, JDM soft plastic bugs I showed you in the other episode. Uh, these are a really wiggly creature bait. Uh, very much uh, imitates like a sand flea or or, um, or any kind of real insect. Uh, and I catch a lot of fish on these, believe it or not. So at one point, I'm gonna give one of these bags away to uh, a subscriber, so in the future. So there's that. I also have, uh, now this is a Big big Bite Baits saltwater, uh, but it's their little saltwater assortment. It's basically like a little uh, small gold and brass colored kind of like crayfish thing. Almost like a, um, well, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I, I keep those there just just out of happenstance. I keep a pair of forceps for grabbing things, uh, getting out hooks. Um, these are shorter ones. I keep a long nose, needle nose pliers. Uh, there's a little float in case I want to clip something on keys or whatever so they don't get lost if they fall overboard. But that's that little zipper pouch. Again, I like this because that folds down and makes a really nice platform for working. This box is my trout mag magnet uh, selection. So I'll open that up. So again, you got all different colors of trout magnets from um, the golden clear, the purple black, or I should say dark purple, light purple. Um, this one is a good little trout magnet color. The orange, peach color. Uh, I call this the cream sickle. It's got the orange tail with the white body, gold. Uh, I also have some small little hair split spinners for trout. Um, you know, a little black and red with a chartreuse uh, blade. This is a, this one catches a lot. That very glittery red and black um, with the red feather tail. This one is like my ladybug color. White little fly, just a standard silver tail. And white clear. Um, magnets and again my video when I went down to my uh, my middle school and my high school um, I got these little little guys here so I threw them in here uh, just to keep with the rest of my trout magnet stuff nothing major a couple little soft worm um, assortments pink orange and green I can cut them off to length and I also keep in here a larger beetle spin um, just in case I'm, I'm catching things also I have some small little soft plastic style uh, creature insects. I got like a, I don't know what that is, like a cockroach or something, and some ants, uh, crickets, um, other things, floats, if I'm float fishing, some other soft little cricket, and a fly of some sort. Um, but that's, that's it, lo and behold. So that's my little trout box. I keep that here. Um, this one does not have a uh, multi-tool on the outside because I have the pliers on here and I have multi-tool on the inside. Uh, I keep flashlight, which is really good. It's a two-way. It's got the flat panel on the bottom and the lights on the top, LED. You know, I never know when you're out at night. I have random spools for my spinning reel already spun up with different lines um, for the different spinning reels I have so I can easily, quickly swap out for a different line. So that pouch, this pocket, again, some different, uh, here's some Berkeley monofilament um, for leader, uh, probably more on the bottom. Oh, here is 
reel grease in case I need to fix my, my reel or rod. Needs greasing. And I keep a bag there just for trash also. Always handy to have an extra plastic bag. Uh, weights and more sinkers. So just some bullet weights and some egg sinkers, some split shots, different sizes. Again, I got my, my trout magnet, so I might want to throw a little split, split shot on there. Um, so it's good to have handy. And in the very bottom, a micro screwdriver uh, set with the handle and the different size screwdriver heads. That's just in case I need to do, again, a quick repair on a rod or reel for me or if somebody's sitting there, you know, fishing with me, their reel gets hung up. I can uh, help them out, try to get them back on the water. It's always nice to be a, you know, a courteous fisherman. We're all out there just trying to pass time and have some fun. Um, ah, the big pocket in the back. This is more of the meat and potatoes. Um, here's some more weights, sinkers. But mostly this is um, my wire leaders, uh, things to do little quick repairs and whatnot. I got some paper clips in here. Here's where I keep my multi-tool. I keep that in here with a pair of sharp scissors, um, some beads, a lot of different barrel swivels, triple, uh, uh, three-way swivels, clips, lightweight tackle between what's in the box or inside the main compartment of the bag and what's in my, um, my small tackle. So I can just do what I got to do with egg sinkers. And then in the dry box, because you always want to keep these watertight, I keep my assortments of some jig heads, some swim jig heads. Look at this one here. So a little swim jig head, a little white with red eye, yada yada. Some chartreuse ones. Some uh, nice shiner head style swim, swim jigs. Um, Trip hooks, treble hooks, uh, split rings, random assortments of different sizes and and uh, material, regular, you know, hooks, all different sizes, even some tiny little brass ones down here in the end. Uh, but that's about it. And some, you know, some other random little jig heads. So I got swim jig heads in here. I got some, you know, some other random swim head assortments. But that's just that. Basically hooks. Uh, I also keep in uh, in this one my pegs, so I can peg the line. In the other box I have the tie-ons. These are the rubber ones. I like these a lot better. The little uh, egg egg pegs. So I'm put these back. So, yes, I'm a, I'm a bit anal about making sure I put shit back where it came from. Okay, main compartments. And yeah, I keep. Uh, let's bring this up. So I keep the uh, the license, my fishing tackle license, in here. A little ruler, just in case I want to measure something or I need a straight edge for cutting something. Uh, and then, of course, my assortment of boxes. So we'll put this on the floor and we'll get into the boxes. So first off, buzz baits. This is my buzz bait box. Everything's labeled, top, bottom. So I keep in here different buzz baits that I throw occasionally. This has been out obviously in the water. A little green pumpkin trailer there. Here's a black and blue buzz bait. A little uh, curly tail grub as a trailer on there. Um, some even I, I occasionally will get those dollar buzz baits at Walmart. So I have a, uh, a pair or two of those. Um, these work okay. I mean, if you're going to throw something where you're in a really snaggy area or or you just don't want to risk throwing something, you know, an expensive buzz bait like this, I'll throw that out there. I'll put a little crappy trailer on it. If I lose that, I'm not, you know, not heartbroken. If I lose one of my more expensive ones, obviously, it's a little bit more of a pinch to my, uh, to my ego. And I also keep in here, even though it's mostly buzz baits, I throw in some, um, some random chatter baits. Uh, and chatterbait jig style heads. So uh, this is a little shaky head chatterbait. So that's a fully uh, articulating with a really stout hook. I think that's a four aught, maybe a five. I think it's four aught. But that's a really nice stout, sharp, super sharp hook. But that's a good, good bait. I also have another nice white silver flake chatterbait. 
And some random things. Here's a an oldie but a goodie. So this is a fish-shaped head. I gotta change this grub out. This is pretty pretty janky old grub. But uh, it's painted jet. It's got the uh, weed guard here, and it's got an inline little spinning blade on the very tip. Tie it on. And this actually works very well. Surprisingly, it's oldie but a goodie. Sometimes you can't compete with stuff from from the past. Here's a little chatterbait hair jig. Some other little jig heads. Little, little jig head there. It's more or less, um, it's, it's, it's a top water, it's a vibration box, I should call it. Because it's mostly things that put out a lot of thump. Um, not just buzz baits, but I just generalized it as my bud, buzz bait box. Um, spinner baits. Spinner baits. Again, you know me. My favorite go-tos are going to be spinner baits that are a willow leaf and a Colorado blade together because the Colorado is giving off vibration and the willow is giving off flash. Um, a lot of these you probably saw in my recent post I just picked up. Some of these uh, I'm sure you didn't know I had, but this one's a really nice one. They, these uh, three willows definitely imitate extra fish. That chartreuse color uh, with a little white grub as the uh, trailer, that works out well. A lot of people got these in their MTB boxes, and so did I. This is one of those knuckle, knuckleball baits. Um, it's a little, this one is not the silent one. This one has a little rattle in it. Um, it's a white on white with a, uh, a nice little swim jig. You bounce this off the bat, and that little ball rattles around. Different than a, a normal, um, a normal willow leaf or Colorado blade bait like this one. This is that frog one that I... I like, I'm interested to throw in this out. I want to get this out on the water soon. Um, <clears throat> but I'm try, I want to try that knuckle one. I don't, I don't know of anybody reporting any success on it. I think it's a little get, bit gimmicky. But uh, again, you know, I got it as part of the MTV box. It's not like I went out and purchased it on my own. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reserved in, uh, in my opinion on it. Um, there's another little, it's that soft rubber pad. This is good if you have lily pads. You can throw this out. You're not going to get hung up. It'll sit on the pad. You can pull it down into clear water and then start dragging it along. Um, it gets out pretty easy. So I use this a lot. And uh, the rest of them is just basically different colors of the same thing. Here's a double willow, white and black. Or I should say white on white with uh, silver. This one's white and black. White and black with uh, willow, and this is more my my style: smaller willow and a larger um, Colorado for that for that flash, and then the thump on top. So, but there's that. Moving on. Try to keep this under an hour. Um, crank baits. Crank baits. Lots and lots of crank baits, and I got some more crank baits to add to this. So I've got a whole series of crankbaits. My go-to colors are going to be your ghosty colors, your silvers, and your shad colors, and your, your um, you know, the right now in the cold water, uh, colors like this, this bluegill, translucent bluegill, will work out well. Um, a little later when the, when the weather uh, heats the water up and you get into the mid-50s, I'll switch over to a lot of the, the crawfish patterns, these reds. Um, Silver and black here. Never fails. Try to show something, your hooks get all bunged up. Um, I love these. These are the um, these again. Strike Pros jointed 70s. These are 70s. Um, I like these little things. I, what gets me is that the, the gill, you I mean, they imitate the gill section so that that opens up and flashes that red every once in a while as it's swimming. So that's definitely something that all of a sudden will attract the fish, attract the fish, attract the fish as it opens up. So that, that caught my eye. I think that'll work out well. Um, I haven't used it in that uh, in the silver or in this uh, this like gold tone color, but I'm very interested to see how that plays out uh, in the early spring and summer. And then I recently picked up two new Rapalas. Um, these are their scatter lip 
um, design. So it's a little bit different of a lipped uh, crankbait. I mean, you have your your typical square bill. So you have like a square bill. This is that Balsa B2 flat side from Bagley. Um, with the square bill, this is almost like the computer chip, you know, real thin uh, swim bait. And then this one has this odd coved cup. So you see it's, it's almost uh, bowed in its shape. And this is supposed to give off a much more erratic swimming pattern. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I got that in the chartreuse color. They call like something lemon or I don't know. And then I also got a uh, the red craw pattern and they call that the demon color. Get this back in the box until I go to put it away. This is their craw pattern. They call it demon. Um, so I got that to throw. And then of course I got some, you know, old school, old school ones that definitely catch fish. Um, in the past and some little tiny ones you know you got you can't just throw big baits sometimes you got to tease tease the big guys up with little baits so I got that one and of course these are a whole variety I've got some uh, two to four footers four to six eight ten foot divers these uh, these scatters run I think three foot um, all right swim depth nine to twelve eight to thirteen all right, so these are even deeper than I thought. So, but they'll they'll come in handy. Uh, rattle traps. This time of season, early early spring, cold water, rattle traps are a go-to. Um, focus on your, you know, don't focus on the really bright bright colors. You want to focus on your muted tones or your silvers. So things like you know this little guy here with that silver or red tongue, that'll get definitely bit. Uh, things even like these, these iridescence, like this purple spot with that gold transparent bottom, dark amber, blackish top. This is, a, that's a killer, a killer. Um, muted tones, a little worn down, but little muted shiner kind of patterns, um, black silvers. In the cold water, before the water temperature gets up into the, uh, you know, into the 60s and 70s. Um, going with muted tones is the way to go. I've got uh, this Lucky Craft here. I'm thinking this one's going to work out well for me. Another good rattling uh, lipless crank. Now, not all lipless cranks are rattle traps. Rattle traps just a brand style that was marketed. It's, um, it's you know, it was Phil, uh, Lewis's marketing to call them rattle traps. But every lipless crank has been just kind of cocooned into that terminology of a rattle trap. So I do have obviously original rattle traps in here and a, and a whole variety of other brands and uh, functional lipless cranks that, uh, that fall into that kind of category, including this little guy. This is a, um, it's almost like a speckled trout or a little bit of, yeah, like a speckled trout. It's, a, it's an amber color. Um, it, doesn't have any real rattle in it, but I'm very interested in seeing that. That's going to be very shiny. This is another uh, Lucky Craft product. Um, this one doesn't have a name on it. Otherwise, I'd, it just says product off Lucky Craft. So I don't know exactly what the title of this uh, this guy is. But uh, I'm going to definitely have fun throwing him uh, in a couple of weeks when the water temps come up. So there's my cranks and rattle traps. We'll go top water. And here's where the fun and the gimmicks begin. First off, the real stuff. If you want to catch bass, big bass, all time throughout the entire summer, and that's when your you know your your top water bite's gonna kick up. Poppers are a must. You always catch good sized fish on a popper. So I've got my you know my loon black and white pattern. Or dirty water and I've got more of a shiner uh, minnow style color for obviously you know early morning uh, I've got some more bright greens and chartreuses with some feather tails these are pretty good poppers I, I've caught on these too uh, yeah, I'm sticking myself to death here caught on the ring 
Right. And of course a little smaller popper for my lighter tackle. How did you get in there? Sorry. A little smaller popper. This is a very interesting popper because it comes with this weird extra hook. This is an oldie but a goodie little frog pattern. That's seen some fish. It's seen some work over the years. I keep changing the hooks out and throwing it and catching little bass, little small mouths and, and all. Um, and then of course, jitterbugs. Gotta have jitterbugs. That's a bass catching device right there, jitterbugs. Again, there's a jointed one. A little jointed jitterbug. The walking action on these always seems to attract the big bass out of the shot out of the uh, cover and up to your to your rod. Uh, here's a little prop bait, a little dual prop. But uh, this guy catches too. And and then gimmicks. So yes, I am one that fell for the ducks. <laughs> so I, I do. I have a few of the Savage Gear, um, the hard ducks. Um, a couple of patterns. I have the regular mallard duck color because I wanted something that would be, you know, as close to realistic as possible. And then I have this little black one for dirty stained water. Um, I have a couple of non-top water things in here. Again, if you're out there and all I've got is this on me, I want to be able to throw something that might grab their attention that's not a, necessarily a top water. I've got my, you know, prop fish from Lunker Hunt. So I got the black. My white color, my black color, my chartreuse blue and green colors. I mean, that's typically what I throw is going to be dull, muted tones, silvers, flashy colors, and then brilliant colors like chartreuse's oranges, bright greens, and then black, dark colors and whites. So, you know, that's just those four or five color schemes that tend to be the ones to go to based on water clarity, time of day, um, temperature of water, and, of course, matching the hatch of, of the, uh, the bait. For the prey fish. Uh, I have these little hard crayfish. And these are actually a lipped jerk bait or a lipped crank bait, I should say. But again, I got that dark green, hold in the light, with a bright, uh, like a melon bottom, speckles, and of course your traditional black backed, bright red bright red crawfish but these guys are these guys are good guys to go to and then of course the ones that I've thrown in the past more than anything this muted clear transparent or translucent I should say amber uh, and then I've got you know your typical like dollar store version that I've had for years um, there's those and I have actually caught fish on this guy here this is a uh, lunker hunt uh, if I remember correctly, this is their uh, their uh, dragonfly, and I've caught on the white one. I've not caught anything on this green one, a green and black one, but I've caught on the white on the white dragonfly. So I keep them. It, it gets gimmicky, yeah, but hey, it works. You never know. It depends on if you have a an overtly ha hungry or hostile bass or fish that just uh, says, "Oh, that's interesting. Let me try that." Frogs. So I had my hard poppers there. Here I keep my frogs. So I have my popping frogs um, right here. Uh, larger size popping frog. I have my hard bait frog patterns. Basically, it's anything that looks like a frog. Uh, this guy right here catches fish. More of an open water frog. Excuse the phone. Somebody's trying to call me. Uh, I do have another popper here, but I keep him in here because he does have a little bit of a froggy kind of color to him. And, uh, you know, if I want to just throw out a popper and I've only got this box with me, I've got something to make a little noise and racket. Uh, hollow bodied. This is the Lunker Hunts um, turtle. Now, with this prop turtle or the whatever they call it with a little spinning feet. I did use the trailer hook and I actually took the skirt off of a, uh, a, jer of a jig and I threw it on here just to draw the attention with the chartreuse and speckle up to that, um, up to that uh, trailer hook. 
to that stinger so that I would get more hookups because they will short strike this and they'll bite at the feet, but they won't bite the body of the turtle just because of the, the dimensions of it. Um, for some reason, I just they, I found that they would miss. The same thing happens with these little frogs, little prop frogs. I did the same thing. Took the trailer off of a cheap uh, Kmart, or not Kmart, uh, Walmart um, uh, uh, skirt from a, from a jig, and I just threw it on here because it matched the color scheme. And it just adds bulk and something that feathers out the back end of it. It doesn't actually get caught up in the feet. It swims perfectly fine, but it draws the attention to the to the stinger hook. And I have the prop frog in a black color for dirty stained water, and of course the regular for clear water and, and stuff. Regular little tiny ones, little tiny pad crasher frogs. Um, this guy, the buzz plug. Buzz plug works well. It's good vibration bait. I'm dropping it. And this is, uh, I believe this was another uh, mystery tackle box catch for me. Something I wouldn't have otherwise bought. I don't particularly like these style frogs with this heavy weighted foot. Um, you have to reel it extra fast, in my opinion, to get these to really kick properly. Otherwise, they just kind of are lethargic. Uh, and I'd rather have a more vibrant um, movement uh, and, and, verb and, and vibration. So for that, I'd you know just as well go with a regular frog with uh, the, the typical um, you know rubber band trailer because that moves a lot faster in the water um, as it's skirting across than those heavy weighted uh, rubber feet. And then of course I have the little mice. Um, I have caught them on this one with the red with the brown tail. I've not caught fish on the white one yet, but uh, you know worth trying. And I haven't caught anything on this big guy here yet, too, but I'm going to throw him more often and see if I can't get a fish to, to nibble. I have had, you can see right there on the butt, on the butt I have had a, a close call, but I haven't brought him on the on shore, so it doesn't really... To me, it don't count. If you don't bring him on shore, you didn't catch a fish. And, of course, the Whopper Flopper box, which I think I've showcased already. Um, I have my... series of whopper ploppers in the 110s, 90s, 70, uh, um, this is the, uh, yeah, this is in the 90s, and I have the one whopper plopper that I just purchased recently in the 70. Um, I'm really looking forward, or 75, I should say, I'm really looking forward to throwing this. It's the only smaller one that I have. Um, and then, of course, I've got the uh, Strike King, or not Strike King, um, Savage Gear version of the Whopper Plopper, their version. Um, big difference is they have that weighted, the weighted tail on the bottom. But I like the color scheme. So I got one in a larger um, silver and black, and then I've got it in the smaller size, so they complement each other. And you can daisy chain them across. In fact, I watched one YouTuber had a video uh, where he daisy chained a bunch of different Whopper Ploppers together, borrowed one from his friend, and just swam them in a line, see if he could catch a fish. It ended up being like a snake of uh, whopper ploppers by the end. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that as a gif, as a as a gimmick, and as a goof in the future. Um, frog pattern colors: chartreuse's greens with a black. This is more of a more of a frog than anything. Is this one here? I just put you in there. Of course, stuck to my finger. All uh, right. So there's that frog pattern. Um, of course, like I always say, muted tones. Uh, especially right now, if I can get a topwater bite, I would throw early, early on this color. You know, amber, darker, kind of off, off green, gold colors, um, silver, shiny colors like this one. Um, as the summer kicks in, then I'll switch over to things like the bright black, red, uh, the bone. Bone. This is not a silence. This is a rattle one. Uh, which is good. And the piece de resistance, my custom made for me uh, foul mouth fishing whopper plopper. And remember, at 500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a custom uh, turbo tail to one lucky subscriber, um, one lucky faithful foul mouth fishing family subscriber. 
So that's still over there in a box of goodies. I have a whole load of stuff to, uh, to be giving away to fans and supporters, more importantly, um, to my YouTube channel. Uh, including tackle bag, which I will be giving away to a, to a subscriber in the near future. Um, a whole host of, get this out real quick, a whole host of tackle and things that uh, certainly will, will be given away. Um, like I have a tailspin by Lunker Hunt. Um, it's a nice little tailspin, definitely catches fish. Got uh, the custom whopper plopper ready to go. So, some fishing line, some odds and ends, um, a little keeper for, for your fishing uh, license. You put the fishing license in here if you want. That's what I use personally because it keeps it nice and straight out of the way. Um, just different things. Um, fishing, another fishing license keeper I'll be giving away, obviously, with, with other things. But uh, just to let you know, so that's what I'm trying to do is, is just, you know, get people out there, get people fishing. Uh, I have uh, Doc Demon I'm going to be giving away as a fishing rod. I might give away other poles and gear and, in the future. But uh, the whole thing is to get people out fishing and enjoying nature. So I hope this was a little bit intuitive or a little uh, exploratory as to what I carry. That's bag number two. I still got more. <laughs> but... Uh, I wanted just to post something real quick. So I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, tell me in the descriptions down below and in, in the messages. Leave me a, leave me a. Oh, this video sucked. Oh, this video was good. Whatever your feelings. If you like something or you want more interesting content about something, you're, you're looking for questions. Tell me so I can look it up and research it. Or if I already have the knowledge, I can share it. Um, and uh, like, subscribe, and certainly, certainly share share please um my channel so uh, other people can be informed educated and this family can grow the faster we get to 500 the faster i start shipping out goodies to different people uh and the faster we get to a thousand the faster i ship out big ticket goodies to people including uh on my 1000th subscriber a hundred dollar uh gift card so uh Hope you all enjoy. I hope the weather starts turning for everybody up here in the Northeast. Uh, I know a lot of people in the South are lucky enough they're getting warm weather. So uh, I hope you're enjoying your fishing out there, and I hope we get some warm, warm weather for us up here, and the spawn can, can start kicking off. So, foul mouth fishing. Thank you for spending some time with me. Goodbye.